So this is an example of our uh, complete notebook. Okay, so this is the tissue engineering lab that I showed you. So the students can easily see. We actually have, um, we can see right here, this is dotted line. Oops. Right across here. So we have multiple sort of text entries even on one page um, so for different parts of the lab. So if the students want to, we could print off just this one page for them. We could print off the whole entire, I, I suppose this one entry. We could print off the entire page for them. Or they can edit just one of the entries and not the whole page. It really depends on how you want to set things up. Okay. And then over here we have multiple pages. And you can see there's a little hand here, or people, I think it was what it is. It shows that that page is shared with different people. And over here you can see who the last edited. So my TA made some edits over the last summer. We can go in and see all the different revisions that have been made <coughs> on it. Oops. What's interesting is you can kind of see that we had our, our TA, myself, we had a student assistant that's made some changes to this document. I made some changes to this document. And depending upon which lab you look at, you can kind of see how the contributions have come together to create almost like an e-text, if you will. We kind of, kind of think of this as, as sort of an electronic textbook. The first semester we did this course, we actually had them buy the printed copy at Bob's Copy Shop. So again, the paper version versus this. We had to take that away from them when we graded it. I had them rip pages out. Um, so that was, that was not so good. So um, one of the really neat things, you can go over here at the top. You can actually pick whatever notebook you want to pick. So you can pick um, for different classes you might have. To create entries, <coughs> you can just click on the Add New Item. Okay? <coughs> and you can do different things, a new folder, a page. You can copy an entire page you have. You can copy from another notebook. Um, and so what we do for our template is we have them copy an existing page. Okay, and they just pick the template and hit create. And what they now have is a way to sort of automatically name that page. We give them the format to use the date in their page names. But you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> and then go over here and edit. Um, maybe it's thinking. Okay. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> um, yep. I'm still a little unclear on how students use that lab manual, so they can print it, but then if they wanted to do it electronically, how would they do that? Yeah, so uh, for the lab manual, we actually, so in our computer, in our design lab, we actually have computers in there. Oh, okay. But they can bring their own laptops. They can use a phone. So we actually go to two different labs. One's a wet lab. And uh, so for the wet lab, we tend to have them print copies because we don't want them to spill reagents on their, on their laptops. But some actually still bring their, their iPads or whatnot and will look at it, the um, lab on their, on their iPad. So anything they write? Yep. So from, they, yeah. yep. so from, from, the, from the app they can, or from the, um, hmm. okay. <laughs> That's why it wasn't loading. I lost my internet connection. <coughs> Limited one. So that's me, that's not you. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, so well, maybe let's go into the demo now and have you guys play around with it. And you can kind of see how that works. So what, th what they'll end up doing is they'll just open a page and they can edit right in there, answer the questions that we have for them. Um, right in real time. They can fill in the blanks in real time uh, with, right within the lab, whether it's on their phone, on their iPad, or in a browser like this. So, is that, does that answer your question? Yeah, I guess I'm a little confused about like what's about the sharing. Like, ah. like do they just have all of that in their own account then, that lab manual? Yeah. They can make changes and it won't change your Right. Space. So. I can, let me go back to the, um, since I don't have internet connection. <laughs> I'll get rid of this. Um, 
So here, um, each of the students has their own notebook that is based upon the original notebook. So that complete notebook that I have, uh, we actually create a new notebook for each semester, BME Design Spring 16, mm -hmm. and we release labs to them every week. Cool. And so by copying from our complete notebook into the Spring 16 notebook, and then hit Update Student Notebook, then they, all, all the students actually get the, the new content that we added to the lab. Thanks, I forgot to mention that part. Yeah. So it's a really nice way for us to, oh, we maybe want to make changes to the lab in the future, or maybe want to move labs around, which we've done before, because this, this class is maybe going faster than the class before them. Uh, we can do that, and we just, you know, I always have about two weeks of labs released to them at a time ahead of schedule. Um, and then each of them has their own notebook. So in this, in all of our courses, they all manage their own notebook. We're actually doing a new trial this year in our senior design class in which four students and a team are sharing one notebook. Um, so in that case, they're all, so you'll, you'll actually do this today, collaboratively editing a single notebook. It actually will not let you edit the same text entry at the same time. So if you go and enter a text entry at the same time, it'll say, sorry, so-and-so already has it open. It will let you do collaborative editing through the widget through the Google Docs, so just like you would in Google Docs. And it will let you edit somebody else's entry that they made once they've posted it. Correct. You just can't both be in there typing over each other. Correct. Okay. Yep, so you can edit anyone's completed entry. Um, they can edit yours if it's shared, and you give them editing rights. Um, you can also give them just viewing rights if you want. So I know with our other design course, they'll go in and share their notebook with our team members so they can see what other people's research is all about. Um, but maybe they won't give them editing access to their notebook. Yeah. Is it possible to do commenting or something like that rather than a permanent entry or you know, addition to their entry? Yeah, so we discourage our students from doing commenting. So there is a comment feature. And you'll see it over here, we have a bubble that pops up that shows um, if there's comments in the notebook. And you can click on that to get the comments. Uh, what the comments don't have is they don't have sort of that patent protection that the, the page would have. So we, we, we actually use the comments for grading sometimes. So we'll go in and give them a comment on their notebook for, for grading purposes. You need to have more content here. It's, it's not clear what you're trying to say. Or maybe you answered the question wrong, um, something like that. Any other questions? Yeah. Do your students usually just have computers to like specialty Yeah, so when we first started this, not all of them did. Um, we did kind of a survey first to see who had some kind of a device, whether it was a smartphone, an iPad, or a laptop, and all of our students had one of those. Yeah. Most of them had laptops. Most of them actually, well, I, th I shouldn't say most, quite a few of them check out laptops and do it. Um, uh, in the past, now it seems like everyone has their own laptop. In fact, our college is moving to a laptop model where we're not going to have computer labs in engineering anymore, which is kind of strange to me. But um, <laughs> the students will have their own, own laptops. So. Yep. Let's jump in. Yeah. And um, you should all have a, th thank you for the intro and demo, John. Um, you should all be assigned to be part of one of the teams making brownies. So there will be team sugar and there will be team egg. Yes, Margaret? Did everybody get logged in? Raise your hand if you have maybe had a problem or if you need some help getting logged into the, the lab archives. Beth, can, do you I can look over. Yeah, can you look yeah. on him? Yeah. Um, so everybody's in. Okay, I just want to make sure that before we start talking about teams and folders. And you'll find that if you are on Team Sugar, you cannot head in on Team A, but you can see what's going on in Team A, and vice versa. If you're on Team A, you can't head in Team Sugar. So we've set that up for you. So your basic idea is <coughs> that we've got in protocols, uh, the, that's your lab instruction. This is how we figured out how easy it is to use it. <laughs> so there should be a, a brownie recipe there. And if you're on Team A, your job is to go find the eggs or the brownies and to draw or take or procure a picture of an egg or however many eggs we need and put them in your <coughs> egg folder and ditto if you're on the flour team or if you're on the cocoa team or whatever the other sugar and butter. Sugar and butter. We try to keep it very simple. <laughs> um, simple recipe. And, um, and then eventually 
eventually you're going to all collaborate and put them together into a final recipe that has step-by-step -step how to make brownies. Now, we're not going to get through this today. But what, <laughs> what you can do is we've got this little didactic worksheet here, activity sheet, that gives you suggestions on what sorts of things you can try. So in the next five, ten minutes, get in there, play around, and try it. I'm especially interested in how it works on like the Surface and the iPad. So if you have a Surface or an iPad, um, I'd be really interested to see how like the sketching works yeah. and some of the other um, tools work. The sketching on a laptop is Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the sketching tool in here is pretty there, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But what's nice about it is um, I've seen students that have had, you know, styluses and things like that actually do some fairly nice sketches because, you know, why not? If you want to see a sample sketch, John Martin, the world-renowned artist, yeah. put a picture of a flower in the flower te team flower folder. <laughs> Super awesome. Yeah, so go check that out. Um, you should be able to figure out what team you're in by trying to edit a document in each of the folders. So you'll each be able to see all the folders, but if you try and edit, you'll find some of them you can't edit. And the ones you can't edit, that's not your team. Go find your team. Um, and, yeah. So give it a try. Oh, look, somebody else. Mike! Mike added flowers. It's right on it right down here. Yeah. Yep. Like the right kind of flowers. John Mark got confused. And I, last night, I actually took a, uh, my, my app out, took a picture of my wife's favorite oh. brownie recipe, <laughs> and uploaded it directly into the notebook. So the best brownie recipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the one we're using today. Apparently, we're using the second best. <laughs> <laughs> so that cool. That was the picture on the kitchen counter. So yep, yeah, that's my kitchen counter in the background. I set the box on there. I went to the folder where I wanted it, the page where I wanted it, hit the camera icon and said, asked you, asked you how big you want the picture to be. Said, OK. <coughs> asked me to type a caption. I could talk into my phone to type the caption if I wanted to. And there it is. How do you tell who's on your group? How do you what? Tell who's in your group. So says um, I don't have permission to Correct. So let's close out of that. <coughs> so anybody else who has access to the flower page is going to now know that you are in this group. So what you do is you could leave a little note and say, hi, this is Mike. I'm in this group. Is anybody else in this group? Who else is in this group? So you can edit the picture that you did, or if you scroll down, yeah, add an entry. Yeah. Yep. And you can say, hi, this is Mike. Those I'm in this group. Or, than or, than group or whatever. <laughs> Does anyone not have a computer or tablet or phone or anything? You can borrow an iPad? So one thing I want to add, too, when you first create your account, don't change the email address that's in there. Even if you have a preferred email address, that tends to be the one that shows up. And if you have a class of students, make sure you tell them do not not change their email address. Because in the faculty center, if you want to upload their email addresses to the notebook, if they've changed it, they won't get your classroom notebook anymore. So then you got to say, OK, what, account is, what email address is with your account, and then you got to manually add them to the course. So. so that's the course manager, so I can see all the students in that. If I go and click on one of them, like even the first one. So let's say I go to Mize Notebook. It'll open a, a, a page that gives me easy access to all the different students in the course. So I can see some of her most recent activity or who's had activity in her notebook. So for her, she said 89 entries. I could view just the stuff that she's done in her notebook here. Or I could pick a different student from the list. <coughs> or I could pick a different section from the course. Maybe I just, just want to grade section 301. Okay, so it minute. still takes you to each student's notebook. It doesn't take um, you to you, their most recent it should, entry. It can. So if you click on view, then you would be viewing her, her most recent oh, entry. So this is her most recent stuff. And then you can go to the next entry pretty easily. Or the next student. So the cert by, there's a cert by, is that relevant? Is that chronological? Yeah, so it's only chronological. They're working on fixing that. OK. It doesn't, doesn't change the sort order. Got it. <laughs> so there's also. It doesn't change the sort order, so you only get to choose by chronological. There's also an assignment feature. So we had, last year we tried the assignment feature. 
I didn't like it. There were some caveats. I mean, our, our TAs did most of it. They, they, I don't know. So we could go in and see this is the reflection. So it puts this little box up here that no grade was assigned because we end up just stop assigning grades in here. But there's a grade book for the course. And then you can kind of, again, go through all the different students for this one assignment. But they're working on making improvements in this. So this is, not, this is a good way, if you wanted to, if you wanted to see just one type of content, this is a good way to see that. But I wouldn't call, I wouldn't like, I don't know, I wouldn't assign your grades in here. I would just maybe use it to look at stuff. So John, if they, if they improve the grade book a little bit, would you drop Moodle? I probably would drop Moodle. We do some. Just use this. We do some automated quizzes too. I don't know, so I might. I don't know. I, yeah. This doesn't do quizzes. This doesn't do automatic answers to quizzes. <laughs> you can write whatever you want. You can write whatever you want. There are some widgets that um, are maybe getting there. I don't know. So there should be a quiz at the top that says add entry. So there are widgets that. You know, do all kinds of different chemistry stuff. Google Docs. You can. Is there a way to share those out to other labs and such? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so these were created by different people at different universities that they thought would be useful for other people, so they made them public. But you could create a widget and then I guess share it internally or externally. So I mean, we could design widgets that maybe would do Moodle like grading. I don't know. but. All right, so what do you guys think? What's the, uh, has anyone ever had a chance to play around a little bit, at least create a picture or something? What are your thoughts? Hey, look at that. Someone took a picture of the class. Nice. <laughs> somebody, somebody drew an awesome picture of butter, too. <laughs> it's very impressive. But Wikipedia's butter. I don't know if it was on that one or if it was on the butter plan document. Oh, look at that. So, yeah, so you can all create. Oh, oh, oh shut nice. by the butter. Awesome. There it is. Look at that butter. <laughs> Complete with measurements, friends. That's impressive. And you can see Allison did that, so thank you, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the surface? There you go. Nice. It's, it's still kind of rough. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> As a student, um, they can. I think if they if I go to this notebook and I click <coughs> on the notebook, you can see a chronological view by person. You can't really see a chronological view of the whole thing. Maybe you can here. I don't know. Okay, so I guess maybe you can. So they can do it now from from that view as well. Wow, look at that. You did it, you guys. Yeah, exciting. So yeah. who's making us brownies? If you see lab notebook, if you go in and see chronologically the last entry, you can also tell yeah, who put that entry in. And yep. It shows each entry and who authored it. Yeah, exactly. See off to the right there, Beth. Here's the, here's the name, the date, and time. Of each per, of each one. So any uses for this outside of traditional lab classes? We've got a number of PIs in our department that use it for the research lab, and they oh, really like it. <laughs>
So I think the notebook size is unlimited now, but the file size is four gigs. So there's a 250 megabyte file upload size limit right now, uh, but it, it's like just right. They uh, just recently announced unlimited storage on the platform for us. And students um, have, if they don't, so when you get a course, if you add them to the course, they have 21 days to pay for it don't pay for within the 21 days, they can no longer edit their own notebook, but they can still see it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's for our course notebook. Yep. Anybody can go in and create their own personal life notebook. Yeah, you, yep. Notebook, notebook. Yep. <laughs> so my, my wife may use this for her storing her recipes. Uh, I use it in my personal life to take notes when I go to different places. Um, what's really nice is I can s search the all, just all my notes you know, in one quick place, rather than having to search, you know, file structures within my own laptop. Um, and when you search that, access, access all your notebooks. Uh, you can access one notebook or all your notebooks, or however you want to do it. So you have a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned that students have this with them after they leave the university. Correct. How does that work? They just pay for it one time in a course, and then. They have it, or yes. So they, they they pay for one semester. After that semester is over, they can no longer edit that course notebook. In fact, I think we have to set a certain date in which that happens. Um, and then from there, there's a way for them to port their notebook to a, their own account outside of the UW account after they leave. Um, but they also can download the PDF if they want to have the PDF. Yeah. The app looks cool as well. So if you haven't played with the app, it's worth looking at. The sign-in for the app is a little bit more complicated than it is for the laptop, and there's a link <coughs> to the directions on how to do that here. Um, but we are out of time. So thank you, John, for 